alas. While lately we've been looking at the chakras, minor and major, soul star and beyond, along with the Kundalini and more, the truth is the chakras truly are only a stepping stone to an even greater awareness. And so today it's time to dive deep into the nature of the light body itself. So buckle up and get ready. And if you haven't yet, make sure to download the free chakra meditation to get the most of your light body experience. Links in the description, please enjoy the video. When exploring the light body, one of the first things you might learn is actually about auras. In new age circles, auras are usually thought to be a kind of energy that emits from your body and follows the same frequency pattern as the chakras, where the root is the smallest body, the physical form, and then the sacral body, solar body, heart body, and so on, radiate outwardly around you. Many people claim to see auras, and there are actually techniques that may help you to do so, including unfocusing your eyes on a person or even just putting a hand in front of a black screen it's not uncommon to see either a colored or white glow around the object of your focus. The aura system mirrors the chakra system almost identically because in a way it's part of the same system. The aura reflects your energy body on the outside just as your chakras reflect your energy body on the inside. However, both of these systems weave together to create the human light body. Much like how when you put the seven colors together in light, you get pure white light. The thing is, there are actually many different types of light bodies reflecting different geometries that can be necessary for different purposes. The most commonly discussed one is the star tetrahedron, but you can have a light body based on any of the platonic solids. And then there is even the covenant 486 Merkaba, which is said to be the root of the tree of life system itself, and which we explore in our spirit medicine walkers workshop at the end, for those who are interested. For the purposes of simplicity, today we're going to be exploring the original Merkaba that we learned, which is a great place to get started. But before we jump into anything else, there's something we must know. No matter how much you try to understand the light body, Merkabas and chakras through the sacred geometry and logical explanations, it will never be enough on its own. As Drumvalo has explained, there is a missing half of our understanding that is purely experiential and can only be experienced through your own practice when centered with love. As we understand it, the Merkaba is the divine light vehicle used by ascended masters to connect with and reach the higher realms. It is the full extent of our energetic and subtle body that when fully active encompasses our whole self and can stretch out to anywhere between 55 and 72 feet. This particular one is based on the blueprints of Metatron's cube and the tetrahedral energy field, taking the shape of two counter-rotating tetrahedrons spinning around the body in line with the chakras up the spine as the axis. And though while it may look like there's only two star tetrahedrons, there's actually three, but the third is overlaid onto the others and is often forgotten about in the meditations. The Merkaba is an extension of our energy field or our collective energy field that acts as a vehicle which allows us to move through the different dimensions and frequencies all around us. The word itself actually comes from the Hebrew word that means chariot or cart and forms a huge part of Ezekiel's vision in the tradition of Merkaba mysticism. In the book of Ezekiel, the Merkaba is used to refer to the throne chariot of God the four-wheeled vehicle driven by four cherubim, each of which has four wings and four faces of a man, lion, ox, and eagle, often which are esoterically seen as reflections of the four elements. For the most part, the teachings of the Merkaba mysteries revolved around the visions of the prophet, which were centered around stories of ascension and people transcending the physical world into the realm of God. Some writers have even argued that early Christian theology and discourse was influenced by the Jewish Merkaba tradition to some extent. In fact, some see the accounts of St. Paul, who has been argued to be influenced by Gnosticism, to be one of the earliest first accounts that we have of a Merkaba mystic in Jewish or Christian literature. Throughout Kabbalistic history though, discussions concerning the Merkaba were limited to only the most worthy sages, as it was considered overzealous to ponder on the nature of higher worlds and what they looked like. In more modern teachings, Melchizedek tells us that the Merkaba can be recreated through conscious breathing and meditations in as little as 18 breaths. The first six are for balancing the polarity, the next seven are for proper pranic flow through the entire body, and the final breaths are from shifting the consciousness from third to fourth dimension. And then finally, the last three breaths are for recreating the rotating Merkaba within and around the body. The meditation has a lot of parts though, and while we may animate it one day, if you want to walk through, you can check out Drumvalo Melchizedek's Flower of Life, Volume 2. 
Ultimately, the first step to creating and remembering your Merkaba is always love. And even Melchizedek explains that a lot of people don't need all of the left brain steps because the right brain, the experience of love is enough to activate it naturally. To be clear, there are different kinds of Merkabas out there. Absolutely. In fact, in one particular plant medicine ceremony at Rhythmia, Thoth appeared in my inner vision and shared with me a different Merkaba than I'd ever seen before. It was octagonal in nature, surrounding my body with a three-stranded DNA helix spiraling through it and a tremendous volume of rainbow particles shooting out of the bottom and rising up to the top. Wild stuff. That said, I know we talk about the importance of love in this kind of stuff a lot, but it really is the most vital part. Love and connection are the very life and heart of the Merkaba and light body that supports the chakras, as love is said to be the frequency of creation itself. To that end, the Merkaba isn't just a tool or some aspect of you, it is alive and fully a part of you. It's no different than how you have a nose or an arm. The Merkaba light body is what lays the blueprints for the nadis and the axiotonal lines that we've talked about before. It literally is the lines that allow the prana, chi, and energy to flow back into you and out into the universe. Our Merkaba is our connection to the divine. It's what links us to each other and the universe itself. So how does the Merkaba light body relate to the chakras exactly? Well, the eight chakras that run through our spine actually have duplicates in the space around our body, inside the extended Merkabic field. They're said to look like spheres of energy that vary in size, depending on your own size and height, the same as the Merkaba itself. Like the energetic flow system mentioned earlier, they're laid out in the blueprint of Metatron's cube. Each sphere sits on the edge or point of a tetrahedron and are kind of like our chakras twins. And Melchizedek said he was actually able to find a record of them using a molecular emission scanner. So when it comes down to it, you can think of our spiritual structure like this. First, there is the energy flow through the chakras, which is facilitated by the nadis when we breathe in and out. From there, the meridian points and lesser chakras reach every cell in the body. On top of that, we have the prana field, which is very close to the body and is generated by the flow of energy through the chakras. Going up in layers on top of the pranic field, we have the auric field that extends a few feet around us in every direction and is generated by our thoughts and emotions and energy all working together. This is the realm of the dream time and something that we'll talk about in great detail later on. Guiding and protecting our auric field is another energy field in the shape of the egg of life, the original shape of creation. Once you get past that, you start to get into the realms of light and geometry and our energy takes on a much more geometric nature that can be influenced by our consciousness. Herein, we find the light body, yet these geometries are overlaid across and through all of our lesser systems, much like how streams branching off from a river will be like a smaller fractal of the greater body from which it comes. When you bridge your newly mastered lower centers with the previously unknown higher centers, and when you're willing to step through that doorway into what's next, everything in your life has the capacity to change as you step into the life of an empowered creator, creating creation with all that is. Salutations. We're on the cusp of a whole new reality. Surely you can feel it. After all, you're a vital part of it. Our world is changing and we are changing, but changing into what? When we make the sovereign decision to be the change we want to see, we participate with the global transformation and blend our energies together, making for a greater, more positive shift of ages. As we deepen our understanding of ourselves, we expand into what's possible for the world around us. And what better way to deepen into ourselves than by connecting with each other like a chapel of sacred mirrors. Thank you, Alex Gray. Seeing each other in our aliveness helps all of us to step into our creative power remembering that we are spiritual beings having a human experience. It leads to both knowing ourselves deeper and removing obstacles and limitations from our own energy field because we learn from each other how to find the elusive way of spirit and balance that with our human nature. So many of us have been walking the solo path for a long time or only had a few friends that they really felt they could connect with. I know that because it's a part of my story too.